Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome to this week's Georgia State Sports Update. to you from the Georgia Dome, our opening segment of the Georgia State Sports Update, the season opener for head coach Trent Miles and the Panthers. Tough one in the books, the final score. Ball State comes into Atlanta and comes out with a 31-21 win over Georgia State in the Panthers season opening game. Dave Cohen along with Harper LaBelle and Brandon Leak from the radio crew and tough loss, not able to uh, run the football. We got to see two quarterbacks today in Connor Manning and Aaron Winchester. Aaron ended up being the leading rusher, uh, but Georgia State, after a quick pick six, uh, struggled offensively to move the football. Yeah, we saw some good things and some things that need to be corrected. Uh, Connor Manning, on target, accurate, gave his wide receivers chances to run after the catch with his passes. Aaron Winchester came in and showed he was fleet of foot and really gave Ball State's defense something else to think about. Defense came out early, got a couple of interceptions early in the ball game, converted one into a pick six. So some good and some bad because later in the ball game, I think that the defense was a little bit worn out with all the plays the Cardinals ran. Tell you what, the way that uh, Jerome Smith started out, I was having flashbacks, Harper, to Bobby Baker last year in his first game with five takeaways in the Charlotte game, which ended up, unfortunately, in the loss column as well. I know. He had a third interception, but they took it away from him, so he was just too shy of that amazing record that Bobby had from last year. But uh, turnovers were a big portion of staying within the ball game here early, but uh, the second half turned out to be a little bit different. You know, we've talked so much about the experience returning on the offensive line and honestly with uh, the crew of running backs and then you look at who they're running in behind. I really thought, uh, especially against Ball State, uh, knowing who we have in, in games two, three, and four, that we'd be able to run the ball a little bit better ultimately than we did in this game, uh, but just wasn't to be. Well, yeah, you, you saw Coach and the coaching staff try to come out in the second half and commit to the run, and when it didn't happen, they had to go with what was working, which was the short passing game, the screen passes, and putting the ball in the hands of the playmakers out on the edges. And so uh, you certainly want balance, and Coach Miles certainly has preached that ever since he's been here at Georgia State. So it was a, a little bit uh, of a mystery of why we could not run the football, especially having Kendrick Dorn, an extra running back who was not here due to injury last year. You have a stable of running backs you would like to put out there consistently against the defense to give them a lot to think about. Harper, one thing we talked in the radio postgame show is uh, if you look at that stat sheet, uh, rushed the ball 52 times. I'm talking about Ball State now. 52 carries, 325 yards, and then you can see other areas in the stat sheet that reflect that in a time of possession, almost 12 minutes more time of possession, 35-56 to 24-04 in favor of the Cardinals. Yeah, they, they just took control in the second half. That's basically what they did. Four possessions, four scores. It's hard to stay in a ball game when it's tied if you're not putting any points on the board. And that was the biggest issue tonight. The second half was all ball state. They were able to run efficiently. They were able to get, able to get first downs and then ultimately get the ball across the end zone. What was your observation looking at uh, Connor Manning and Aaron Winchester really for the first time? Because other than the spring game, we haven't really seen these guys. I mean, I think Connor took a total of six snaps while he was at the University of Utah. Basically, you're dealing with, you know, two quarterbacks playing for the first time at the Division One level. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Nobody had completed a pass as a Georgia State Panther prior to this game. So whoever you're going to put in, it was going to be a new guy. And Connor Manning had terrific stats for a first half. 60% completion percentage, it was higher than that, 168 yards. You did have a touchdown, one interception, but we couldn't move the ball efficiently. So Coach Miles decided, hey, I got a gut feeling. I think we're going to go with Winchester. Let's see what he does. We were able to run the ball, but we only got one touchdown in a, in a situation where we needed to score more. They're both going to get better. The whole team is going to get better offensively, but we've got to be able to put – Anybody at quarterback can be able to get the ball to what I feel is the strength of the team, those wide receivers, and get it in their hands. Connor Manning for his first game, first start, uh, Brandon, 21 of 32, 163 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And as Harper just alluded to, with two first-team all Sunbelt Conference guys and Penny Hart and Robert Davis and a guy like Todd Boyd, and then you go down the list of the tight ends, starting with Keith Rucker and even a guy like Ari Wirtz. I mean, 
you know, if we're going to struggle to run, and I'm not saying we're going to struggle to run the rest of the season, but those are the guys, those are the go-to guys right there. We've got to be able to deliver the ball. Well, yeah, chemistry is a big part of it. And you saw Nick Arbuckle uh, the last couple of seasons when he was pulling the trigger. He had great chemistry with his wide receiver. So in the first game, I thought Connor Manning came out and did a, a phenomenal job of getting his receivers the ball, getting them into some rhythm. Now it comes down to getting first downs, moving the chains, maybe taking a couple of strikes and getting some of those those chunk plays where you get 20, 25 yards in one play, those are the types of things that demoralize a defense. And hopefully as time progresses and these guys get more reps in real live game action, they'll be a little bit better. But uh, I think ultimately we just need to score more. The offense put up 14 points. The defense put up seven. You want to see a team put up 28, go north of 30. And I think Coach Miles and the offense will certainly look at some things on tape to try to get to those numbers. You could kind of tell by the end of the game the defense, which played so well in the very early, you know, first half and early in the third quarter, they had, you know, were on the field much too, much too long, as Coach alluded to on the radio as he was going into the locker room. Well, 81 snaps, and that's a lot, and a lot came in the first half, and so I think seizing on the moments early would have made a difference. When you get a couple of turnovers and you stop a team, you want to put them in a bad bind, get up 17, get up 13, get up 20, make them play from behind and do some things that they may not want to do. Unfortunately, we got the turnovers and we were still in a 7-7 game, a 14-14 game. And so a team that came in on the road uh, in a, an environment that should have been hostile, they were still in the ball game and then kind of pulled away late with their defense um, and their offense leading on our, our defensive line. It'll be interesting to see how the Panthers bounce back. They got a week of practice coming up before they head out uh, to play a team we know is going to run the ball and run the ball. And as Brandon said, they're going to run the ball more. And we saw them in here two years ago, the Falcons of Air Force Academy. Someone said it was a gauntlet, the schedule that we had coming up. It's amazing. I don't know either, but you know, it doesn't get any easier, at least not for the next couple of weeks. You got to go to Air Force. You got to play in 7,000 feet. You got to play against a team that's going to run and then keep running and then run some more. Then you got to go to Wisconsin and play against a Big Ten team that is as good as they get. It's not going to be easy, but you've got to work on improving and getting better at what you do best. Right now, I think, as you mentioned, both of you, uh, get the ball to your wide receivers, include your tight ends, even a dump off to the running backs. Work your pass game, but we have to be able to run the ball more efficiently. Control the clock more efficiently. We get that done, now we got a chance. All right, again, Panthers will play out in uh, Colorado Springs next Saturday afternoon, taking on the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. Tough loss here tonight in the opener here at the Georgia Dome, 31-21, the final loss, uh, final score in the loss to the Cardinals of Ball State. Right now, let's take a look at some of the highlights here at the Georgia Dome. I'm going to try it up. 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 I'm going to try it up.
Some of the highlights here at the Georgia Dome for the Panthers lost to Ball State again 31-21. The final score, Georgia State on the road for the first of three straight will start out in Colorado Springs on Saturday against the Falcons of Air Force. All right, here's what's coming up on the Georgia State athletic schedule. Friday, September the 9th, volleyball will face Kennesaw State in a tournament over at Georgia Tech. That's on Friday, September the 9th, and on Saturday, September the 10th, We'll be with the head coach Trent Miles out in Colorado Springs. Georgia State football on the road for the first of three. Going to take on the Falcons of Air Force. That's coming up on Saturday. Kickoff at 2 p.m. 1.30 on the radio network. Busy day of football got started down at the Georgia Dome. Not so much inside the dome, but outside the dome. Lots of Panther fans coming down early and tailgating. Our Jared Oliver all around the Georgia Dome keeping an eye on what they were cooking up before they came in to watch the Panthers. Hey, what's up? I'm Jared Oliver for GSU TV, and we're just a couple of hours away before the Panthers kick off their season opener against Ball State at the Georgia Dome. We're here at the tailgate, and what better way to have fun and kill some time than at, at the tailgate? We've got one of the assistant basketball coaches over here. Coach, what's up, man? Uh, just tell me, what are some of your expectations for the football team this year? Uh, we're expecting good things. They, uh, you know, our football team ended last season so well, so we... Uh, winning how many ever games they won in a row or out of whatever it was five out of six four out of six and Georgia Southern game at the end of the year was great and then it cap it off with a bowl game so exciting time for them last year and you know this year we look to build on where we left off last year awesome and I also see you have the basketball team out here also showing support for different clubs and programs for Georgia State how important is it to have that camaraderie to show support for each club around here yeah, so we got the basketball team, uh, baseball team sharing a sharing a tailgate here. Women's basketball team's right over there. So, like you said, it's important. Um, you know, we help each other out. We show support for each other. Better, you know, better football team is better. We're going to be better. The athletic department is going to be. Every team benefits. Everybody benefits. So it's a good thing. I mean, it's good to support them. Football team's great at our games because they sit right on the baseline and they just heckle the other team. They harass the other team's coaches. I mean, those they're ready. You know, the other teams are ready to fight our football team. But when you look at them, you don't want to fight anybody. So it's uh, it's great. You know, we show our support for them, and then once their season's done, they come out and support us. Well, I'm going to test your football analytics a little bit. Uh, what 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 do you think the football team needs to improve on most uh, coming off of their great second half season last year? Ah, see, mm, that's tough. I hope it doesn't get me into trouble. I'm going to say starting the season, right? So last year we got off to a slow start and we finished so great. So like, you know, I don't know if there's one thing. I don't know enough about football. I know that we, you know, we lost our all conference player, Nick Arbuckle. So we're going to have to replace him. But at the same time, man, if we could pick up where we left off last season and get this thing going early, then it'll pay huge dividends later in the season. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to kind of get around here. Uh, to see what's on the grill. We've got my man Sam out here. Hey, man, what's going on? Tell me what you got on the grill, what's on the menu, what's what's to eat, man? Sure, sure, sure. So uh, we're, we're proudly serving our Vienna beef dogs straight from Chicago. We got our burgers and our spicy grilled chicken sandwiches. Yeah, yeah man. Awesome. So what what's what it, what's that, what is it that people are getting the most? The hot dogs, the hamburgers, the fried chicken? I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. the baked chicken? <laughs> yeah, man, it's a toss-up between our burgers and our pure beef dogs for sure. These guys, these guys can eat, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, man. That's awesome, man. It's a great environment. How much do you tailgate out here? Or how much do you experience this uh, environment? Yeah, well, you know, we're on, we're on board with GSU Athletics. Uh, we're on site with them, whether on their campus or in, our, in the parking lots. We're, we're here every week, and so we're, we're loving it. A great team to be a part of, for sure. All right, well, we're just a few moments away from kickoff, man. Jared Oliver here at the tailgate. Uh, back to you, Dave. Thanks, Jared. We're back in studio now with Georgia State's head football coach, Trent Miles. And, Coach, appreciate you coming in. Tough one on Friday night in the Dome. Ball State came in and did what they had to do. And uh, for us, I think maybe what we saw defensively a little bit or what our defense saw from them, uh, from their offense, was a little bit different maybe than what we were expecting. Heard a little bit of that in the, in the press conference, the post-game press conference. Uh, but nonetheless, some good things. But in the end, it, was a, it turned out to be a tough loss in the opener. Well, our, our defense was left uh, out on the field way too long. You know, we didn't do anything on offense. We never took any shots down the field. We tried to throw everything underneath. They blitzed us, made us get it out of our hand. We didn't run the ball. We had two yards rushing at half. 
only ended up with 77 yards rushing, and most of that came on the last drive with Aaron Winchester scrambling. So, you know, offensively, you know, offense, you've got to help the defense. And our defense played a lot of plays, and we got behind, and Jesse uh, started making some calls to try to get us back in the game, and, and we get a guy out of the gap, and boom, they can make a couple long runs, and the, the rest is history. So, you know, uh, there's some, a lot of room for improvement, but there were some good things about our defense, especially the way we started the game. Uh, we started with two turnovers and uh, we were able to get points off of a pick six and, and anytime your defense gets a score for you, you think you're going to be pretty good and, and uh, do well. But uh, offensively, we just struggled so much uh, to get going and never got into a groove and it hurt the defense. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the uh, two early takeaways, Jerome Smith. After the second one, I was having flashbacks to Bobby Baker last year in his first game as a Georgia State Panther. He had the five takeaways. Uh, you're right, we go up early. Uh, and it was it was back and forth, uh, but you could tell, like you said, the de you know defense obviously scores the touchdown. We were having trouble moving the ball, uh, especially with the running game. And, and you told me you were prophetic in the radio pregame show, because last year up there, what did we rush for? Thirty three yards. Thirty three yards. You told me if if we have if we struggle to run the ball in this game like we did last year, without having someone like Nick that could throw the ball downfield like he could, that we were we we're going to be in for a, a little bit of a challenge, and we were. Yes, well, we can throw the Connor and Aaron can throw the ball downfield. We just yeah. didn't get to it. Yeah, couldn't get to. They're playing off and blitzing, uh, and just driving up and making us get the ball out of our hands. So they were going to make you uh, earn it, you know, with five yards here, six yards there. And we didn't play disciplined enough to to do that, and we didn't. Uh, we weren't able to run the ball and, and pick up some of the the schemes that uh, we had practiced for. So, you know, we've got to back to the drawing board, get better, and and learn from it and move on. It's just the first game. We've got uh, 11 more to go, and, and uh, our kids will come out r raring to, to play hard in, in this game. Not to make any excuses, but uh, in starting at the quarterback spot, you, Connor ends up getting the start. We see a lot of Aaron uh, in the second half. Was it really just a situation of those two needing to get on the field and get some playing time? I mean, neither one of them had really ever taken, except for Connor, a little bit, I think six snaps or so at Utah. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was the first Division I game for both of those guys. Uh, it's going to take a game or two or three for, for them to kind of get their confidence and get their feet set uh, with what they're doing. Well, we had the plan on playing Aaron anyway. We're going to play. Aaron's going to play. Yeah. Uh, but what we, we went to, then we, were, we found some runs that we thought we could get with some quarterback runs, because the way they were loading up the box. You know, they can't account for the quarterback. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to get two quarterback runs to try to help us run the ball. That's why Aaron went in at the time that he went in. And uh, we'll get to that earlier in the, in the game, in, in the Air Force game. Talking to Coach Trent Miles here on uh, the Georgia State Sports Update. Uh, you know, you look at the time of possession because in the second half, obviously, Ball State's head coach, Mike New, said, we're going to keep the ball on the ground. That'll, you know, keep the clock running. Uh, if you look at the time of possession difference, it's, it's almost, it's, what is it, two and a half, three minutes shy of an entire quarter, mm -hmm. which shows you, you know, what their game plan was by the time we got to the second half. And why our defense got gassed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's reasons for that. We've got a good defense. It's, but, you know, I don't care how good a defense you are, if you're out there uh, for as long as they were without breaks, you know, and the offense not helping them. And then a couple times in the kicking game, we put them in tough situations with, uh, you know, some, some of the kicking stuff. But... You know, we, we want them to play uh, lights out all the time, doesn't matter what the situation is. But, again, you, you've got to do your part as a team and play together in all three phases to be able to keep everybody fresh and keep everybody uh, positive and things going. And we were unable to do that. And my hat's off to Ball State. They, they, they did it, and, and we weren't able to. With regards to the running game, Coach, because uh, I felt pretty good about our running game going in with regards to the guys that we've got carrying the ball and the, the experience that we turn on the offensive line, was it really more of what Ball State was able to do or was it uh, was the offensive line, uh, you know, not in sync for, for lack of a better term uh, on some of those running plays? A combination of both. There yeah. are some things that uh, they really did well uh, with some of the blitzes, that, run blitzes that they did that don't allow you to uh, run the ball and then some of the things that you know first game deals that uh, you know guys you, you'd wish had corrected and, and were able to execute and we just weren't able to and we did not do uh, the execution the way it needed to be. You know going back over to the defensive side he was in a boot on Friday when we were when I was over at the dome with the team during the uh, kind of a walkthrough. Brian Williams ends up leading the team with 
<clears throat> 10 tackles, six of those unassisted. Uh, Alonzo McGee and Caleb Ringer, the one-two punch in the middle, combined for nine as well. Yeah, that, uh, Brian played really well, uh, as did Jerome Smith and Shandon Sullivan. Uh, you know, we, we've got to get everybody playing really well. And we've got to you know, be able to, if they ask us to play 120 plays, to play 120 plays. So, you know, we, we're going to have to find a way to get it done. And again, it's got to be in all phases, not just on one side of the ball. All right, so you've had, uh, you know, you're in a week of practice right now, and we're beginning what I'm calling the gauntlet because the next three are on the road, the first two and then uh, a bye week, and then we open up Sunbelt Conference play. How's practice been since the game on Friday? Because, uh, you know, you do get, a, I guess, a little bit of a built-in extra day, although they probably took, had Saturday off, uh, but getting ready for the next one, which is a trip out to Colorado Springs to take on Air Force. Yes, uh, I mean, practice has been good. Guys, have, you know, they, they understand what they did wrong and what the mistakes were. Now it's just about going out and having leadership and correcting that. So, you know, they practiced hard. Um, we played Friday. We gave them Saturday off. Then we brought them in Sunday morning. And uh, they worked on Sunday, Monday, and uh, today. And, and uh, we'll work the rest of the week heading, heading, out, heading out to Colorado Springs. And, you know, we still have uh, uh, some of our package you still have to get in for the game. You know, you don't right. do it all in one day. So... Uh, tomorrow, I think, is our third down short yardage goal line red zone package. So we'll get all that going in, and, and hopefully we can get some of the bodies back that, that were dinged up and, and uh, could be able to go out and have a great showing at uh, Air Force. Uh, before we get to questions for Coach Miles this week, you know, Air Force, historically, we saw them in here a couple of years ago on the front end of this two-game series. They're going to run, they're going to run, and they're going to run some more. I mean, but they have, have the ability to throw it now. Right. I mean, they threw two 62-yard touchdown passes in their game against Abilene Christian. Yeah. And uh, you, you think that you're being lulled to sleep and it's just, just run, run, run. And if your eyes aren't right, they're going to run right by you and, and throw it over your head. So, you know, we have to be prepared, mentally sharp. And, and uh, uh, again, we have to be able to control the ball on offense. You're going to get limited uh, possessions just because of the nature of their offense. They're going to eat up the clock and, and they're going to get yardage. But, you know, you, can't, you can bend, but you can't break. And you've got to be able to to keep them out of the end zone and get the ball. And when you get it, you got to score because you you might only get that ball probably seven, maybe eight possessions for the game. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be you've got to be sharp on what you're doing offensively, and you've got to be able to go score points. All right, time now for questions for Georgia State's head football coach Trent Miles. Hey, coach. I just wanted to ask if you were in a competitive food eating contest. What food would you choose to eat? Uh, I would say some sort of meat, uh, either steak or ribs or chicken. Hey, Coach. I'm Megan. Uh, my major is human learning and development, and I want to know what your favorite song is. Oh, my, my favorite song? Uh, well, my, my ringtone on my phone is Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra, and my wife's ringtone on my phone is Ed, Ed Sheeran, uh, Thinking Out Loud. Hey coach, my name is Jerome, biology major. I just want to know, what are your expectations for this season? I see a lot of hard work for our team uh, this season. We've got to develop leadership. Uh, we've got to define, find out uh, who our playmakers are, other than the ones that uh, have been there, like Penny Hart and Robert Davis and Keith Rucker and Todd Boyd. Uh, but we have to develop more, and we have to uh, develop a, a camaraderie on the offensive line uh, where they're doing everything in sync and together. Uh, defensively, uh, I just we need leadership. We need uh, to see who's going to replace Joe Peterson from last year and be a leader on our on our defensive side, so that when things get tough, someone uh, can everybody can look forward to someone taking control and leading them. All right, coach. Good questions this week. Interesting. Uh, of course, I uh, I think they were you know looking more like a, like a hot dog contest, but I'm with you. I think I'd rather be uh, eat, trying to eat as much barbecue as I possibly uh, could or ribs. Yeah, ribs, steak. You know. Uh, I'll, any day, but uh, I'm a big pasta fan, but the carbs i got to be careful with. <laughs> All right, well, appreciate you coming in. We'll see you uh, Saturday out in uh, Colorado Springs, and best of luck uh, out at Air Force. Thank you. All right, and uh, I want to thank Georgia State's head football coach, Trent Miles, joining us here in studio on the Georgia State Sports Update. For the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. We'll see you here next week on the Georgia State Sports Update.